everybody and welcome back to my channel. Well, I'm broadcasting today from Hurricane Irma Central. Well, at least Central Florida. So if by chance next week there is no video, you'll know why. It means because I didn't have power and I couldn't upload a new one. But I didn't want to go two weeks without a video. So even though I probably should be boarding up these windows right now, I decided to upload this video. So as you may or may not know, today is World Suicide Prevention Day. And September 10th to 16th is actually National Suicide Prevention Week. All of that has prompted me to tell you the story about the time that I really, really considered suicide very seriously. In fact, it was an incredibly strong impulse. This all happened in the summer of 2010, shortly after I had realized that I was transgender. At that point, I really didn't know what I was going to do because I'd already had a pretty good life set up with a wife and a kid and the American dream. In an effort to get away from my thoughts, visit some family, and maybe have a little fun, I decided to drive from Houston to Orlando. Now, I made one mistake on that trip, and that was to drive alone. I was accompanied by my son, but he was really, you know, connected to his video monitor and all that, so I really couldn't talk to him, and he was really young at the time as well. So for that 14 to 16 hour drive I was alone with my thoughts and I got more and more emotional as I drove and I really didn't have any place to turn because I hadn't come out to anybody yet and it was around Mobile Alabama I believe it was Mobile Alabama right there on I-10 every time I say Alabama I always think of that part in Forrest Gump where he starts yelling at people Greenbow, Alabama. I don't know why. It's one of my favorite movies though. Anyhow, there's a section of I-10 at that point that's elevated above water. It was really late at night and we were about to cross the Florida border and I had intended to stop as soon as we crossed that border. But all of a sudden I got this incredibly strong impulse that I just can't explain. It came out of nowhere to just yank on the wheel and drive my minivan off into the water. I mean, I had never felt anything like that in my life. And it was one I almost couldn't resist and almost didn't want to resist. As I was saying before, my life was completely set up and I was about to change it dramatically and I was really scared about what those changes might entail. And just as I got to that breaking point, I looked up into my rear view mirror and I saw my son strapped to his car seat in the back. He had fallen asleep and his beautiful little face was lit up by the video monitor. And I realized I couldn't do it. I mean, I couldn't take him with me, obviously. I even thought of some other contingent that I could use. I thought, well, maybe I could pull over to the side of the road and somebody would find him and I could jump into the water and crazy things like that went through my head. None of which I did, of course, or else I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you fine folks. But I really, really, really wanted to do it. And that probably scared me more than anything. The fact that ending things seemed easier than going forward. I think that's a big challenge for transgender people like us. The societal messages out there basically say that our lives are gonna be disasters if we move forward with transition. There aren't enough positive, happy examples of what can happen how things can turn out right. And when you couple that with the extreme self-esteem issues a lot of us have, that can make for a really toxic mix. What's really deadly about being transgender and what can make it a terminal condition isn't really being transgender itself. It's the feelings of hopelessness and the idea that we're not gonna be loved and accepted for who we are. And for people who already have issues with love, you know, at least self-love, that can be overwhelming. It takes a lot of help to get to the other side and feel liberated, but it is possible. Sometimes it means building new support structures for ourselves because yeah, you may lose family and friends over this. They will try to make you feel selfish for wanting to change their lives so much, at least from their perspective. And they forget that the real issue is that you need to change your life. And really it's selfish of them to keep you in that old life just for their own sakes. If this was almost any other condition, nobody would force you not to take the path to a cure just for the sake of themselves. But that just goes to show how many people really don't believe that being transgender is a thing. That they would have you choose their own comfort over yours. They think it's a choice and that you can choose not to transition and you'll be okay. But really they're just planting the seeds of a tragedy to come. While I think I'm mostly healed, there are still a lot of scars and some of those scars run pretty deep. I can't say that sometimes I don't wonder what it would have been like if I had just driven off into the water that night. That maybe there would have been less pain and that things would have been better for everybody. But then I also remember the amount of people I've impacted now. People who would never have known of me or never heard my story. Some of you have even credited me with saving your lives. I don't know about all that. I think you saved yourselves. But if I played some small part in that, it makes it all worth it. That maybe I did the right thing all those years ago. And even before this channel, there's been occasions where I I've been able to help people. There was one day where I had just gotten out of the shower and I realized I had missed a call of a transgender friend of mine. And she had gotten a lot of press and a lot of notoriety for being one of the first people to come out as transgender in her organization. But things had deteriorated with her employer and they had decided to let her go. And when she called me, she was on her way into New York City to meet with people who were going to fire her. And as you can imagine, she was despondent because her family really needed her income to survive. So she reached out to me as the subway was on its way into her station. And I was dripping wet and naked and wrapped in a towel. You know, I could have 
have easily have thought, you know what, let me call her back in a minute after I get dressed. Something just made me call her back right away and when she got on the line, she just sounded extremely upset. And she was saying crazy things like she wanted to throw herself in front of the subway because she felt her kids could then survive on the insurance money they would collect. And I really didn't know what to do. I mean, I'm not a trained counselor in these sorts of things. All I could do was try to reason with her and be her friend and let her know that she wasn't alone. Feeling alone with our troubles can be devastating and lead to devastating things. My friend didn't take her life that day and she herself has become an amazing example. You've probably read some of her words in some of the more prominent LGBTQ magazines out there. There are people out there willing to listen to us and help us feel less alone in those vulnerable times. And I don't just mean therapists and psychologists. There is actually a transgender specific suicide prevention hotline called the Trans Lifeline. The great thing about them is that they're staffed by transgender people who know intimately what we're going through. And that can be so hard to find sometimes when we're having trouble. And of course, there's also the Trevor Project and the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Both are great resources. Please don't hesitate to reach out to somebody when you feel like you might take your own life. Those feelings usually eventually pass. And just like I found with my life, sometimes our lives have ripple effects. And maybe you too are meant to be there for somebody in the future. So on that note, like, share, and subscribe, and see you around the interwebs.